We now return to the practical guide to the universe on the Learning Channel. In the collapse, the star expends unbelievable energy. Our sun's energy output is nothing compared to such a collapse. If this energy was released as light, it would outshine the combined light of all the stars in the universe. But most of that energy, better than 98%, comes out as neutrinos. Neutrinos are elusive particles that only rarely react with other matter. To stop one, a lead shield would have to be eight trillion miles thick. Normally, neutrinos leave a star's core unhindered. They zip through tons of stellar mass into space as if there were nothing in the way. But in a supernova, conditions are not normal. The compression in the shock wave is so great that even neutrinos have to struggle to get out. A tiny fraction of them interact with the surrounding matter, adding to the awesome power of the event. With a force unequaled in the universe, the star explodes in a miniature Big Bang. Imagine billions of suns switching on for an instant inside a single exploding star, blowing away all of its outer layers. As the shock wave passes up through the layers of the star, it causes nuclear fusion of all the known elements. Material closest to the center becomes the heaviest elements, such as plutonium and uranium. Those farther out form lead, gold, silver, and platinum. All the complex elements present in the universe and in our own bodies were created in the heart of an exploding sun. In the universe, the intense light of a supernova travels outwards, announcing the violent death of a star. The remaining core of the star that's left behind by a supernova is called a neutron star. It's called that because it's mostly made of neutrons rather than the protons and electrons that make up most of the material in our world. Extremely dense object, perhaps only 10 miles across and yet having a mass greater than that of our sun means that if you had a sugar cube made of neutron star material and brought it to the surface of the Earth, it would weigh something on the order of 300 million tons. A stellar explosion ejects all the elements of the periodic table into space. There, they will become the stuff of other stars, planets, and even people. This is a description of what is called a type 2 supernova. There is also a type 1, which is even more rare and more violent. This other kind of supernova is not caused by a big star collapsing. Rather, it is believed to be caused by two older stars similar to our sun after its red giant phase has passed. In a type 1 supernova, two white dwarf stars that orbit each other come together as they lose rotational energy. When they finally collide, their combined mass undergoes catastrophic gravitational collapse, forming a single structure called a black hole. A black hole is a star that has collapsed on itself so that it got denser and denser as it fell together and uh, eventually it's so dense, its gravity is so, has become so powerful that it prevents anything from escaping. Even a, a ray of light, a beam of light can't escape from this star. To get a better idea of how a black hole can stop light from escaping, consider this. A spaceship trying to leave the Earth has to reach a speed of about 25,000 miles an hour to be successful, any slower and it would be pulled back down to Earth by gravity. This is called escape velocity. If you were to squeeze the Earth down, the velocity needed to escape gravity would be higher because the surface of the Earth would be closer to the planet's center of gravity. Keep compressing the Earth until it is the size of a marble and the escape velocity needed to leave the surface 
would be faster than the speed of light, the Earth would become a tiny black hole. There may well be several black holes in our galaxy, but as you can imagine, black holes are exceptionally hard to locate. If you look at a black hole, you probably won't see anything, although if you're up close, close enough, not too close, uh, and there's stars behind it in the background, you will see this, the pattern of stars just behind the black hole become distorted, may even form, look like a ring of light, just because the gravity of black holes so powerful it bends light rays that are passing by it. The, the way astronomers the, uh, think they see black holes is by virtue of the effects of the powerful gravity of a black hole on its surroundings. There are uh, what we think are gigantic black holes, the centers of galaxies that seem to be pulling in swirling gas that falls towards them. As it falls towards them, it's getting packed closer and closer uh, together. It's more viscous and denser. The gas becomes very hot, and it gives off x-rays and other forms of radiation, which we detect and we consider uh, the likely signature of a black hole. However many black holes there are, they are not the usual end of a star. Most stars in their deaths release the raw materials for other stars and planets. Scientists believe that our own solar system is made up of the remnants of two such long dead stars. Without supernova explosions, the Earth and all life as we know it would not exist. In a way, it is strangely appropriate that the death of a star would seed the universe with the elements necessary for new life, much the same as a dead tree falls and fertilizes the soil for the renewal of the forest. It seems to be the way of the universe and ties the cycle of life we see upon the earth with the heavens above. For in the end, we are all made of stardust. Next on TLC, we'll join Tom Selleck to visit the homes of the stars, the galaxies that is, as we tour other planet neighborhoods on the practical guide to the universe.